So DeepSeek V3 dash zero three two four is out, which basically means they did a snapshot of the model. They've done some additional training on it. They are claiming a major boost in reasoning performance, stronger front end development skills, which I will actually say is true. I've actually found it actually does create better front ends and smarter tool use capabilities, which I also will say is true. I've actually been able to get it to call tools properly. But what I don't totally agree with is the comparison to Claude Sonnet 3.7 when it comes to coding. There are a lot of people that are really hyping this up, saying that it outperforms Sonnet 3.5 and it competes with Claude 3.7 in coding and math. Now, for me, what that means is in an existing code base, being able to use it in an agentic coding tool like RuCode or Klein and having it perform equally as good. And I just have not seen that yet. So what I've done today is I've put together a test of three questions. I'm going to run Claude 3.7 on one side and DeepSeek on the other side. And we're going to run through this together to see the results firsthand. And right before I do that, I just want to say the hype around this is insane. I really feel like people take benchmarks too seriously now. And there's a big separation that has formed between what benchmarks actually are telling us and the reality of how well it performs for the getting the job done. I love DeepSeek V3. I'm not saying it's a bad model. I freaking love it, but it does not perform in my testing the way a lot of these benchmarks seem to, to say that it should. So I think the benchmarks are starting to become more nonsensical than anything. And I almost think that we need to quit hyping up based on benchmark results. But unfortunately, that's all we have to base things on now. So what I'm hoping to do here is to show you a side-by-side -side comparison, and I'll let you make up your own decision on this. So here I am. I have Claude 3.7 on the left side, and I have DeepSeek V3 0324 on the right side. I'm running it through OpenRouter currently because they've got a version that's deployed, and I'll just show you that configuration here real quick. So DeepSeek Chat V3 0324. One of the big limitations of DeepSeek V3 is it doesn't support images where Claude 3.7 does. So for front-end development in my use case, it's not quite as good, but it's still good. So we're going to kick both these off, and we're just going to watch side-by-side -side how these actually perform. The one thing I will say is the cost is going to be significantly different. So you notice over here on the DeepSeek side, we're just now starting to generate tokens. and But the code is actually coming in fairly quick. I'm actually surprised by that. So we'll see how this ends up playing out. I do have auto-approve on, so it should be able to just kind of go through everything properly here. All right, so the, it's continued on here. We were a few steps in. It looks like we're both both of them are doing some sort of styling now. Just to do a check-in here, they're still running. We're at 14 cents on the Claude 3.7 side, and we're at 2 cents on the DeepSeek V3 side. The token context window is 24.6K on Claude 3.7 compared to 18.5 on DeepSeek V3. One of the other big limitations of DeepSeq V3 is the context window. 64K is not very much. And it actually makes this almost unusable across multiple files because you will fill that up incredibly fast. So if you can get like these bite-sized bits of information that you're working on, it's great for that. Keeps the cost down. But at times, it's just not usable. Now the cost is starting to show pretty drastically here. We're almost 30 cents over on the Claw 3.7 side and 3 cents over here on the DeepSeek V3 side. Now both of them have appeared to finish. Let's just take a look at the files that were generated. So the Claw 3.7 one generated the index.html, package.json, script.js, server.js styles.css, and task.json, which is probably the database storage. What we generated over here on the DeepSeq v3 side is app.js, index.html, style.css, and the same task.json. So immediately from the way the code is broken up, you can tell that we've got a much better layout in the Claude 3.7 side. It did a better job breaking up the files. I'm just going to try to run both of these real quick, and we'll see what ends up happening. Okay, so this is the Claw 3.7 one. We've got a pretty nice looking UI here. I like the graphic that it shows there. Let's see if I can add a task. So it's going to be make a video. Let's say medium priority just because that's the default. I and mean, that looks great. If I refresh, is that going to stay there? It does. OK, 
Can I delete it properly? Yep. See what high priority looks like. High test here. This is actually really good. It's functional. It's running on a server. I I like this. I think this is a you know an A plus. This has done very well here. So now comparing that to DeepSeek v3, it appears that I actually just need to run the index.html file. So I'm going to go ahead and just crank this baby open and let's take a look at how this looks. So no server running it. To be fair, this looks pretty similar. Let's just do a test task here. Um, I like it. Can you delete it? Yep. Uh, Google. See what high priority looks like. Yeah, this is great. And I can edit. So again, I, not bad. This did a reasonable job. Really, neither one of them did a bad job. I would give the Cloud 3.7 test one an A plus by far. And I would probably give the DeepSeek V3 one a C. And the reason for that is we don't have a server. We're not using APIs. We're basically coding this all to run locally. When I very specifically told it I wanted an application. Cloud 3.7 inferred the layout better. It generated my package.json properly. I had no problems with modules. To be fair, on the DeepSeek v3 side, it didn't import anything. It kept it very simple. Prototyping DeepSeek v3 is amazing. Now, from a cost standpoint, we're looking at $0.30 cents compared to $0.03. Cents. Of course, DeepSeek v3 is going to win that one significantly. So I think I got my value out of that $0.03 cents drastically. So if we make it a value-based thing, of course, I think DeepSeek v3 wins on the value side. But again, I don't think it did as great a job coding as the Claw 3.7 Sonnet one did. All right, we are set up for round two now. Claw 3.7 on the left, DeepSeek V3 on the right. Everything's configured right in the default code mode. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm going to have it do here. The next thing I want to do is actually have it test building a 3D game using 3JS. Basically, the player is going to navigate a procedurally generated maze. It's a little bit complex, but it shouldn't be that bad for either one of these to do it because you could generate all the assets that you need fairly easily. I will say at this point, DeepSeek V3 seems to be performing decently fast. Uh, we actually just finished the index.html, whereas we're pretty much done with the styles now on the Claw 3.7 test one here. Apparently I need to actually kick off a command here for Claw 3.7. So a quick update, I will say I think Claw 3.7 is behind because it got hung up for a few seconds on making a directory. But we are at 14 cents here on Cloud 3.7 Sonnet, and we are less than a penny currently on DeepSeek V3 test. So the value is just incredible there. I've never ran this test before, but I'm willing to bet you that the Sonnet one is going to be better. And if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll kind of admit that as we get to the end of this. But I've just done enough with DeepSeek V3 now to know where it kind of falls short. All right, to give you the number of files that have been generated, you can see here we've got collision detection.js, main.js, maze generator.js, player control.js, index.html, and styles.css, where DeepSeek v3 has generated an index.html and a game.js. And it's still going, so it's still editing the game.js. So I will say Claude 3.7 Sonnet has done a much better job planning out the structure of a application than DeepSeek v3. I do not want all my code in a single file, which is what DeepSeek V3 is doing here. Now we're getting to a little bit of an unfair advantage for uh, Cloud 3.7 because it supports computer use here. You can see that it's actually trying to run it and fix it. It's gonna make the cost go up a bunch, but DeepSeek V3 doesn't have that ability. So I'm betting we're gonna get a better output just simply because it's gonna be able to load the website and see what's working and what's not working there. Interesting right now. Um, the Claude browser use here has locked my browse, my mouse into the window here. I can't actually move over to the right right now. All right, so DeepSeek V3 is coming to an end. Looks like about two cents. We've got a summary of the task coming out, which shouldn't crank the cost up much at all. I'm very curious how that's going to work. While Claude one's still cranking away, we're actually cranking up costs there. So we'll see what ends up happening. Apparently, I can just run the index.html file right there. Okay, so this is what we have. Let me see if there's any sort of movement I can do. My keys aren't working. What about arrows? No. I can't move. I can look around. I mean, that that's kind of cool. I wish I could see if my map was actually generated. But yeah, I can't actually move with any of my keys. 
So camera camera controls work great. It just did not get any of the navigation done well at all. And Claw 3.7 is still cranking away. So yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate of a comparison here because of the browser use functionality. But at the same time, that's how I use my code. Like I want it to actually test itself. So I I I don't know how to actually rank this one. I would be curious what you guys think in the comments below. And actually, let's see if we can go ahead and open open this index.html while it's running and see what ends up happening. Oh my gosh, look at this. I think something's updating because I can't move all this. There we go. Oh boy. My, my uh, controls for my camera are not great. It even has shadows. It did like a, there must be some sort of light, a point light or a directional light. And they've turned on shadow casting on here. It's pretty neat. It's very alias though. So it's not like super smooth or soft shadows, but I was not expecting there to be actual shadows in there. Okay, so it did finish. You know what it is? I think I've got to figure out my, oh, okay. Up and down my rotation. Yep, that's what it is. I do not like the camera because I can go up and down, like rotate that way. Interesting. I wonder if I can act, if there is actually a glowing orb that you can actually find here. So I have found the golden orb in the clawed one. Let's see what happens if I pick it up. I won, all right. I'll let you guys decide kind of how to rate that one. But in my mind, before it even got to the browser use, it broke up the code better. It had better separation of concerns. It wasn't just packing it all in a single file. So yeah, the final cost here is $1.13 to get that functioning one from Claw 3.7 Sonnet to 2.5 cents from DeepSeek V3. So for the value, DeepSeek V3, of course, is going to win. It's just going to take you longer to get to the place that Claw 3.7 got to on its own without me interacting with it at all. So again, I don't think they're comparable in terms of performance. If you start taking into account value, then I think there's some arguments that could be made there. So now I'm kicking off the third test currently. And what this one is going to be is a Python program that simulates stock market trading. It's gonna allow like concurrent users, hopefully buying around the same time, queuing it up and order matching. I'm assuming both of these are going to create a single Python file just because I found that AI, even called 3.7 Sonnet, does create that single file. So maybe this is a little bit more fair uh, of a comparison here. If they both generate one file, we can see side by side which one's like more functional. A quick update, it appears that Claude 3.7 Sonnet has finished. I do want to look at the code that's been generated. It was a single file like we thought. And a total number of lines, 374. Let's go ahead and see if we can run it. So it's running in the terminal currently. And apparently we can check the market log to see detailed transactions. So here are the five stocks. No transactions occurred. I wonder how this is actually going to update. Very curious about this. So we're going to let this run a little bit. You can see that people are actually registering traders with different balances in here. So it looks like people are coming in with $10,000. People are placing buy orders for things and sell orders for things. So that's super cool. What I don't see happening though, is the price actually fluctuating. So it doesn't seem like any of those transactions are actually occurring. And if I scroll up through here, it appears like the prices have stayed pretty static. I'm not exactly sure what triggers the price changing. We're just going to let that run a little bit because now what we have is we have DeepSeek V3 done. And I'd love to be able to compare that to see how it's doing. Okay, so I, I'm running it. I'm not getting any output in my terminal yet. I actually want to see if there's any logs at all. Doesn't appear to be. Doesn't appear to actually be giving me any sort of actual log file either. But it must be doing something. It's just not indicating that to me. Actually, I take that back. It appears there is a transaction log that it should create at some point. All right, I'm going to let these run for about 15 minutes to see if anything happens and then just come back and report on it. All right, so I've given up on that. I ran that for a few more minutes there, not seeing any input. Uh, I am getting this shutting down message, which I hope actually kills those threads because I don't want them running in the background there. But yeah, I ended up having to manually kill the DeepSeek V3 one. It wouldn't stop. 
I'm going to do a second follow-up prompt here, giving it feedback on what I saw. And we're going to see how both perform as just kind of a quick follow-up here. The message is going to be quite different for Claw 3.7 Sonnet. I'm going to say, I ran it, but the prices of the, the stocks don't ever seem to change, thus making it where no one ever buys. And I'm hoping that that gives it enough insight. And then I'm going to say to DeepSeek V3, I didn't get any output in the terminal for what was happening and no transaction log ever appeared. So we're going to go ahead and let that run and see what ends up happening here. All right, so it looked like the Claw 3.7 Sonnet one has finished. The deep Seek one's still running. So let's go ahead and kick the uh, Claw one off and see what happens. Oh, it actually gives me information on the pending buys and sells. That's super cool. So I'm going to let that run a little bit. And now the deep Seek V3 one has finished. So I'm going to go ahead and hit run command there. This seems a lot better, actually. So we're getting a ton of logs, maybe slightly too many. Yeah, and it seems like there actually is trading and buying occurring on the DeepSeek V3 one there. And we do have a transaction log now that is growing very fast. I will say the format of the transaction log seems a lot nicer on the Claude one. But it does appear that I am actually getting buy and sells over here on DeepSeek V3. So that is definitely a slight edge there where I don't think I'm getting enough trader activity yet on the Cloud 3.7 Sonnet one. You can see here with Google, we have two pending buys, but nobody's selling currently. I actually want to give the edge slightly here to DeepSeek V3, and it does seem to actually be simulating buy and sell orders better. Cloud 3.7 Sonnet seems like it would work. They're just not putting enough volume into the system here. And for the final cost comparison, we're looking at $0.38 cents to... Eh, close to four cents, you know, a little over three and a half cents on the DeepSeek V3 one. So the value is just insane there. Context window is significantly less at 21.3K compared to 44.7K. Now, it's tough for me because the first iteration of this, I do think Claude 3.7 Sonnet was better. But I do think my follow-up actually made the DeepSeek V3 one work fine. And it's working and giving me feedback so maybe to close this out a little bit, I think DeepSeek V3 is great, especially if you're working in smaller context areas, like a single file. If you're generating a Python script and you don't have anything that's, that's super secret that you don't care if it goes to China, use DeepSeek V3 because, I mean, you're going to save so much freaking money to do basically a very similar thing to what Cloud 3.7 Sonic can do. But if you're actually building an application or editing an existing application, you will be better off using Claw 3.7 Sonnet. It really brings me back to one of my original points is that benchmarks aren't the story of everything. Honestly, every model is gonna perform different based on how you're using it. And for me, DeepSeek V3 will still have a place, but it has two big limitations. It's speed and it's context window. And then I would say maybe for the third one, it doesn't do as great a job like breaking up code or inferring what I'm asking. So where Claw 3.7 Sonnet will put things in like the logging in that stock simulator, it didn't think about that on the DeepSeek V3 side. But again, I'm super happy for this model. I love it. But it, you just need to do your own testing. You need to understand how it works in your use cases and know that you can't totally take these benchmarks as meaning it's going to totally perform better at the things you use it for. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. If you found it at least entertainment or educational in some way, please give me a like and let me know in the comments below to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, until next time, everyone, peace out.